treasure in life. What is it that makes you tick? What is it that you get excited about when you just think about it? You don't have to get into it, you just think about it. And you can start getting excited. Amen, somebody. What is it that you can just do for hours on end? What is it that just seems like once you get into it, ain't even enough time to stay there? And I'm not talking about candy. Uh, what's that thing? Candy? Yeah. Oh, y'all. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what is it? What is it? What is it that, that, that's your trash? Yeah. You just, you just lie to get into. What's your heart's desire? Now, I know y'all don't watch cartoons, but what about Spongebob? Amen. Amen. Yeah, there's no restaurant on there. <laughs> it's called the... Um, Krusty Krab. Krusty Krab. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And, and there's a fella there that owns that place called Mr. Mr. Krab. Okay. Y'all understand something. But if anybody was to ask you what is his heart's desire, you'd be able to tell me in a minute that it's money. He loves him some money. He loves his safe with the money in it. He loves money. Money. He dreams about money. He, he tries to go out and get as much money as he can. Anybody mess with him about his money, they got to fight. Because he loves him some Money. Now, you know where his heart is. You know where his treasure is. But the question on the floor today is, where is your treasure? What shines in your life? What are, if, if somebody had to look at you and say something about you, what would they say about you? That's something to think about. Now, before people take this verse out of context and make it seem like God does not want anybody to have any money, that's not what this thing is about. Amen. Amen. There's nothing wrong with having money. Amen. Look at your neighbor so we make sure we get this out. There's nothing wrong, There's nothing wrong with having money. With having money. And, and tell them this, look at your other neighbor and say, There's nothing wrong, There's nothing wrong. with having nice things. I was talking to somebody and they were telling me about this person. They work 14 hour days and, 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 and they do their business and they, they work. The only day they got off is Saturday. They, they work all day Sunday and it's because they get overtime and double time and overtime. They just got, they're just making money. But when it comes down to the Lord, they got excuses. All right. They got plenty of money, got plenty of toys. No doubt they got boats, cars, motorcycles, and all this other kind of stuff. They got stuff. But when it comes down to God, you probably couldn't find two or three good Bibles sitting around and Now, you got, you got enough money to buy a car and a motorcycle, but you ain't got enough time and money to buy a, 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 a bike. A commentary, a Bible dictionary. Y'all ain't want to work with me. Like that. Oh man, I ain't paying all that money for that. Where's your treasure? Do you see this stuff got to be in you before it can be over? And you've got to make sure that you understand what the Bible is teaching us. The Bible is teaching us to lay not in verse nineteen up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Now, like I said, there's nothing wrong with having money, but it is something wrong with money having you. So it says, instead of having treasures on earth, it says, why not do that? It says, because where moth and rust corrupt. So what's the deal? 
You can have the money as secure as you please. But after a while, by and by, moth and rust gonna come in and deal with your treasure. I don't know, it used to be, especially when I was a little boy, people used to have mothballs all around the house. Because of the simple fact, sometimes you didn't have no mothballs, you'd go get a suit and you would shake it. Dust would fly and part of the stuff, threads and everything else. Good suit, you shook it one time and there it's gone. And, and, and anybody can leave here and go along the countryside route and see a car sitting out in the field somewhere, full of rust. Remember that car used to be on the showroom floor one time. Amen, somebody. But now it's sitting there plump full of rust. You can't keep it even if you think you can keep it. Somebody get that on the floor. You, you got to understand that you kept it as secure as you wanted to keep it, it's still rust. And moths is going to end up getting it. <clears throat> Am I right about it? Yes. So the Bible says even if you made it past that, you still need to get to the point that you realize that thieves still work in. So if you do keep it, moths and rust going to get it. But if you don't keep it, thieves end up breaking in again. Amen. While we sit here in church right now, somebody is trying to hack in to your and my account. Amen, son. They get in mind they'll start crying, but for your account, amen. They allow them to be happy to go ahead and make a withdrawal out of it. As a matter of fact, to think that it, it couldn't happen to you, I had an account one time where they, 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 they did like $3.35. $3.49. I'm like, where are these charges coming from? Somebody that got into the account and just taking three or four dollars at a time. That don't sound like much, but if you keep getting three forty nine, five dollars here and four dollars there, before long you done racked up some money, especially when it ain't your Hello, somebody. The Bible teaches you need to watch where your treasure is. But on the flip side, it goes on to verse 20 and it says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Then he says the flip side, he says, Neither moth nor rust do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. A thief can try to get it out of heaven, but he can't get through. You know, when the Lord puts a guard up, he's going to stay there until he's released from duty. You say, if you don't believe it, let me tell you about the first one I ever heard of put up. In the Garden of Eden, there was an angel that was placed there with a sword to guard the way to the Garden of Eden. Now, don't you know that we know whereabouts the garden is? We know it's in Africa. We know that the four rivers that run out, they're still running out. Amen, somebody. But you still can't get in. Hello, somebody. When God takes care of your treasure, no matter what tries to get to it, it can't happen. Have I got a witness in this place? That's why you got to make sure that heaven is where you're going to put your treasure. That's why you got to make sure that is where your heart is. <clears throat> because if you lay up your treasures in heaven, no matter what it is that you need, God already got it taken care of. Let me go a little deeper. Don't you know that everything happens in the spiritual realm? And then there's a manifestation of it in the natural. So if God, if you put your trust in the spirit of God and allow God to do what only God can do, whatever you need, God has the power to speak those things that are not as though they were. God has the ability. 
humility to step out on nothing and make everything happen that needs to happen. When you put your trust in God, it doesn't matter if you can see your way or not. There can be a mountain to your right. There can be a red sea in front of you. But if God wants you to go through, he will set fire behind you. He will whisper the winds and they will open up a path in the middle of the ocean just for you to go through. At least I keep you too long the story was told of five miners back in the 1800s. And these miners had went looking and panning for gold. They found themselves looking in a cave and it seemed like the sooner they just touch a rock almost, that gold was found in the rock. And the next thing you know, they kept walking around for hours and found more and more gold. So they made up their mind that they were born in the town. And when they got in the town, that they were going to go ahead and buy the materials that they needed to come back and mine the gold out. Are y'all praying with me? And when they went in the town, they made a pact before they got there that we're not going to tell anybody about what we found. We're just going to go in the town and stay there a couple of days and go ahead and come back and mine out the gold. Well, the story went that they went in the town and when they got in the town, true enough, they didn't say anything and they just got their material, got them some rest, and after a couple of days, they begin to go back out to the mine. But to their amazement, when they looked around, they saw about a hundred men on horses coming up behind them. And even though they was a little ways off, they decided to stop right there. And they asked the question, who spilled the beans? Who told it that we had found gold? Who told it? And everybody in one breath said, no, it wasn't me. Nobody had told you say, well, Reverend, what happened? Well, the next thing you know, they went back and they asked the men, saying, how did you know that you needed to follow us? Anything that you want to tell us? He said, you didn't have to tell us that it was going out there. We saw it on the inside of you, and it showed up on the outside. And now I'm raising the question today, if there's something on the inside of you that shows up on the outside, every now and then, somebody will know where your treasure is. Every now and then, somebody ought to be able to see that you're excited about Jesus. Am I right about it? that somebody is following you because you're following Jesus because they realize what's on the inside and it showed up on the outside and when they follow you you need to let them lead them right to Jesus am I right about it? say yes say yes oh yes you said reverend I don't know about the gold but what you might know about is you may be a diehard football fan and somebody in here know that you rate for the Dallas Cowboys. Somebody in here know that you're for the Redskins. Somebody in here know that you are the Steelers. Somebody in here know what your favorite team is. But you will talk about your team. Am I right about it? And that's the kind of connection that you ought to have on the inside with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You remember the woman at the well. When she was at the well, she went up there for one thing. But after a while, by and by, the Lord told her, I'll give you a living water. See a 
You want your church to grow? You got to be on the inside of it. Amen, right so wrong. I tell it wherever I go. I get a half a chance, I'm going to bring up Jesus. Amen. I ain't just saying I'm blessed. Every Pastor Crumb, how you doing? I'm blessed. I'm setting up for you to say something. So I can say something about Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm in the barber shop. I got so happy in the barber shop the other day. I got the preacher in the barber shop. Hello, somebody. Before I live out of there, I might not have an hour to call and ask everybody, you say it, you say it, you know the Lord? It ought to hit you. You ought to be in aisle five somewhere. And it hits you. You begin to say something about your treasure. But it's got to be in you before it can be on you. You know, when Moses spent some time with Jesus, when he spent some time with the Father, when he came back down, what was in him began to shine on him, scared the people. Scared him, had to put a veil over his face. They couldn't stand to look at him. Just, 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 the Bible says he showed him. He didn't say shine, he showed him. Hello, somebody. And, 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 and when you've been with the Lord, it ought to be a difference in your life. It ought to be such a difference that whoever knew you before see that there's a difference and they begin to follow you. And you ought to lead them right to Jesus. Amen? You ought to lead them to the church where you come and worship God in. I can do it. But if I got all of y'all doing it, you say, well, I'm not the preacher. It's everybody's job. To go out and tell about Jesus. The Bible tells you to go out over the hedges and the highways and the byways. The Bible tells you go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what we need to do, y'all. We need to be about the Father's business. Don't let him catch you. Put your work undone. Go ahead and do whatever it is. And don't think you're too old to do what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. You know, Daniel had been out of office for a long time. And Nebuchadnezzar's grandson was on the throne. And somebody remembered what was in it and what was on it when the handwriting was on the wall. And they went and got old Daniel, still serving God. And he was able to tell what was on the wall because it was still in him. And don't, don't let nobody tell you because you got a little older that you can't serve God. You got to sit down now. No, 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 no. God's retirement plan is when he calls you home. Amen? When Moses was time to go, he said, Moses, go ahead and get yourself together and get ready to take me on in. When Aaron, it was his time to go, he said, Aaron, go ahead and get your house in order. It's time to go. When, when Jacob said, go ahead, it's time. Anybody that's ready to go, God will call you to come on home. If you're still here, there's evidence that you got something you need to be doing. And I can't do it like you do. You can't do it like I do, but you need to be doing what the Lord wants you to do. Amen? Amen. Let us go ahead and stand. There could be someone here today who does not know Jesus Christ and the free pardon of your sins. And if that's you, the doors of the church are open. Now is the time to come to the Lord. Let him lead you, let him guide you. Now is the time. Now is the time. Is there one? Is there one that wants to give their life to Christ? Jesus died because he wants you to have your treasure in heaven. And there was no way for you to have it there if he didn't come and die for our sins and God raised him from the dead and he lives now and forevermore. 
So now is the time, if you haven't accepted him, to come and accept him. Keep this thought in mind. If you have not accepted Jesus and you're standing here right now, when your high leg go down and come back up, that could be it. And if you don't accept Christ and that's it, you will lift up your eyes in hell. Don't think that you're going to go to judgment and you're going to see that you're doing enough good, you're doing enough bad. That's another religion. That's not, that's not what we preach and teach you. You have to have accepted him now before it's everlasting too late. Now if you have accepted him, when you close your eyes on this side, and you open them on the other side and be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Is there anyone now that wants to accept Jesus Christ? There could be someone, you're looking for a church home, and you know that you're saved, and the Lord is leading you here. Now is the time to come. You can come by letter. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come under Christian experience. How do you come now is the time? Is there one? Is there one? Don't put it off. Because tomorrow is not promised. You don't want to be caught with your work I've done. If you need a church home, the doors of the church are open. And we welcome you to come and worship with us here at Santa Baptist. Now is the time. Let us bow our heads. Most kind and all wise Heavenly Father, we thank you for the multitude of blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for taking care of us in such a mighty, mighty way. Now, Father, we pray that you will continue to lead us, guide us, show us what to do and what not to do. Father, we pray once again for the bereaved families, for the Jackson family, and for the Russ family. And Father, we give you praise, Lord, for the praise report of Sister Crawford walking in on today. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless and heal her body. As these things come off piece by piece, and that she'll be able to go and do for you better than she's ever done before. And then, Father, remember each and every one under the sound of my voice. Lord, some are standing in need of one thing and some are standing in need of another. You know all about it, Lord. And we know that there is nothing too hard for you. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you bless so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Father, we need you. We can't do this work without you, but with you, all things are possible. And we thank you for that, Lord. For Lord, whether we can see it or not, it's good to know that all things are possible. That you can still open deaf ears, that you can still open blinded eyes. Lord, that you can still give the lame man, the walking legs. And Lord, you can still unstop tongues that were quiet. So help us, Lord, in whatever area we need help. We'll be ever so careful to give your name, the praise, the glory, and all the honor that is so justly due from the creature to the creator. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. And as God's children, we said, Amen. Let us receive the benediction. Now may the sweet, sweet communion of the blessed Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide, henceforth now and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen. And if you're visiting today, come on up.